can't get a bigger screen. Click talk again. Okay, here we go again. We thank everybody for joining. We thank everybody for your patience. We thank God for his goodness. Did everybody yes. come, anybody come back? I don't know. Well, we're going to continue regardless of where we're at because we serve a great and mighty God. Things are going to happen. We're going to have difficulties in this life. But we thank God for his goodness because he is faithful. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to read again Hebrews 4. Hopefully I get through the whole thing and allow my husband to come on. We're not going to keep you long, but we thank God for your patience. It says, now the promise of entering God's rest is still for us today. So we must be extremely careful to ensure that we embrace the fullness of the promise and not fail to experience it. We have heard the good news of deliverance, just as they did. Yet they didn't join their faith with the word. Instead, what they heard didn't ex affect them deeply, for they doubted. For those of us who believe, faith activates the promise, and we experience the realm of confident rest. For he said, I was grieved with them and made a solemn oath that they will not enter into my rest. God's works have been completed from the foundation of the world. For it says in the scripture, And on the seventh day God rested from all his works. And again, and stated before, They will not enter into my rest. Those who first heard the good news of the deliverance failed to enter into the realm of, of faith rest because of their unbelieving hearts. Yet the fact remains that we... Mm -hmm still have the opportunity to enter into the rest life and experience the fulfillment of the promise for God still has ordained a day for us to enter into call today for it was long afterwards that God repeated in David's words if only today you will listen to his voice and do not harden your hearts now, if the promise of rest was fulfilled when Joshua brought the people into the land, God would, wouldn't have spoken later of another rest yet to come. So we concluded there is still a full and complete Sabbath rest waiting for believers to experience. And as we enter into God's faithful rest life, we cease from our own works. Just as God celebrate his finished work, and rested in them. So then we must be eager to experience the faith rest life. So that no one falls short by following the same pattern of doubt and unbelief. For we have the living word of God which is full of energy. Like a two mouth sword. It will penetrate to, air, to the very core of the being. With soul and spirit, bone and marrow meat. It interprets and reveals the true thoughts and the secret motives of our hearts. There is not one person who can hide from their thoughts from God. For nothing that we do remains a secret. And nothing created is concealed. But everything is exposed and defenseless before his eyes. To whom we must render an account. So then, we must cling in faith to all we know to be true. We, we have a magnificent king priest, Jesus Christ, the Son of God, who rose into the heavenly realm for us and now sympathizes with us in our frailties. He understands humanity for a man are for as a man our magnificent king priest was tempted in every way just as we are and conquered sin so so now we draw near freely and boldly to where grace is enthroned to receive mercy's kiss and discover the grace we urgently needed need to strengthen us in our time of weakness we thank god for he 
strengthen us in our times of weakness. Praise God. <laughs> Amen. Thank you very much. Thank you. Amen. Friends. You got to... This, this walk is a faith walk. Faith in Him. Thank you. Glory to God. Amen. Is it muted? Okay, thank you. All right, well... We are not giving up. We're going to keep on going one day, uh, one day at a time. Amen. We're going to allow the Lord to take control as usual. We thank God for, for those of you that came back on <laughs> and probably come on back later on. And we, we thank you. Amen. Amen. We had the, the zoom in and the and the, the YouTube and everything. Amen. Set all set up, but all did not work out. But God promises, he said, I will work out everything. Even though it's bad, he, goes, he can work it out for good to them that love the Lord. So this morning, I just today, I want to just touch on a few on a few um. Scriptures, amen. We, like as I said before, we we not entertainers yet. We not entertaining, amen. So if you're looking for entertainment, this is the wrong place to go, amen. You can go somewhere else and get some entertainment. But here we are preaching and teaching the word of God every single day, amen. There are those who sincerely. Try to live a life that they do not have. Substituting religion for God. Christianity for Christ. Christianity for Christ. And their own noble endeavors. For the energy, joy, and power of the Holy Spirit. In the absence of, rea of reality. They can only grasp at rituals. <laughs> Defending the letter of in the in the absence of the farmer, lest they be found with neither. <clears throat> there are those who have a life they never live. They have come to Christ and thank him only for what he did but do not live in the in the power of who he is between the jesus who was and the jesus who will be they live in a spiritual vacuum trying trying with no little zeal to live for Christ, a life that only can be lived in and through them, perpetually <laughs> begging for what in him they already have. And that was a guy who wrote this. His name was Mayor Ian. Thomas, who went on to be with the Lord a long time ago, man from England, came and started preaching and teaching the message that should be taught. Amen. But since then, there's a lot of people start understanding the message, but they're not getting the deep, the deepness of the message of grace. <laughs> Amen. They don't understand that God's gift of righteousness, a righteousness is from God. Romans 
10, 3 and 4 said, Since they did not know the righteousness that comes from God and sought to establish their own, they did not substitute, submit, sorry, to God's righteousness. Christ is the end of the law, so that the, there may be righteousness for for how? For everyone who do what? Believe. Who believes. Amen. Romans 1, 16 and 17. Said, I am not ashamed of the gospel. Paul said that. Because it is the power of God unto, for the salvation of everyone who believes. For the, the Jew, first to the Jew, then for, for the Gentiles. There's two people living in the world, friend. Two, two set of people. Jew and Gentile. If you're not a Jew, you're a Gentile. And then the Jew and Gentile have to receive Christ and become the church of Jesus Christ. For the gospel is of righteousness from God is revealed. A righteousness that is by faith from first to last. Just as it is written, the righteous or the just kingdom said, we live by what? Faith. Faith, faith in what? Faith in Jesus, friend. Amen. But, but now a righteousness from God apart from the law has been made known to which the law and the prophets testify. They all testify about it. <laughs> the righteousness from God. Amen. Uh, that the righteousness that comes from the righteousness from God comes through faith in the Jesus Christ to all who believe. Philippians 3 7 and 9 says, But whatsoever was in my to my profit, I consider loss for the sake of Christ. What is more? I consider everyone everything a loss compared to the surpassing greatness of knowledge of, know, of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord for whose sake I have lost every all things everything I consider them dumb, them what rubbish that I may gain Christ and to be found in him not having a righteousness of my own that come from the law, but that which is true faith in Christ, the righteousness that comes from God and is by faith. Righteousness is a gift, friend. Galatians 2.21 said, Paul said, I do not set aside the grace of God for if a righteousness could be gained through the law, Christ died for what? For nothing. Romans 5, Paul said, Romans 5, in, in Romans 5 and 15, it said, But the gift is not like a trespass. For if the, man, if the many died by, by the trespass, of the one man who is that one man adam how much more did god's grace and the gift that comes by grace of one man jesus christ overflow in many everyone that receive him again the gift of god is not like the result of one man's sin the judgment follow one sin and brought condemnation. But the gift followed many trespasses and brought what? Justification. For if by the trespass of one man, who that man is who? Adam, dead reign to that one man, how much more? Will those who receive God's abundant provision of grace 
and of the gift of righteousness reign in life to the one man that man one man one man alone name is jesus christ friend amen remember remember before righteousness could be given man had to be totally forgiven cleanse of what all unrighteousness <laughs> you can have you have ch children of god when you you have been come became the righteousness of christ when you accept him first corinthians 1 30 and 32 31 says it is because of him that you are in christ jesus not in religion in christ jesus who has become became for us wisdom from god that is our righteousness holiness and redemption therefore as it is written let him who boasted boast in who no boast in your religion both in, no, both in the Lord. Second Corinthians 5, 21 says, For God made him who has no sin, that is Jesus Christ, to be sin for us, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. God's gift of life. Man's condition under the law is spiritually dead. Galatians 3.21 Is the law therefore opposed to the promise of God? Absolutely not. For if the law, if a law had been given that could impact life, then righteousness would suddenly have come by the law. Romans 7 and 10 said, I found that, Paul said, I found that the very con commandment that was intended to bring life actually brought what? Death. Death. Romans 5 and 20 and 12 said, Therefore, just as sin entered the world through one man, and death to sin, which is Adam. And in this way, death came to how much men? Oh. Friend, all men. Every because of Adam. All men. Born dead. In other words, all of us were born dead. Amen. <laughs> That's what it is necessary for every man to hear the word of God. Faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So you can receive life. Amen. As for you, you were dead in your transgression and sins. John 3.36 Whosoever believes in the Son has what? Life. life. But whosoever rejects the Son will not see life. For God wrapped death remains on him. Key, key point this morning. If you listen to me this morning, you probably have religion. You go to church, you do the, every, all this stuff in church. Amen. The, the, the building, number one, that's not the church. <laughs> we all call it church, tradition, to tell you that. But if you never receive Christ, you're still dead. You're alive physically, but you're dead spiritually. John 3, 18 says, Whosoever believe in the Son has life, eternal life. Eternal, not temporal life. Not temporal, friend. People go to Bible school and everything and still coming back and telling you, you can lose what God gave you, which is what? Eternal life. God did not give us Temporal life. Temporal, you can lose it, but eternal is eternal in him, is his life, number one. <laughs> Whosoever believes in the Son has eternal 
Just, just double check that, friend. Amen. John three eighteen. Have. And is that First John? Yes, First John three eighteen. Eternal. That word eternal. What it means? What eternal means? What is eternal? Forever, Forever man. He gave it to you. White people, preachers all over the world say, yeah, you can lose it if you didn't keep, if you didn't do this and if you didn't do that. Man, it's not what you do, it's what he did. And when you believe what he did and you know what he did, there's no way you going to do. <laughs> My wife has something she always says, right believing will make you live right. <laughs> Titus said that. The grace of God teaches us to say what? No, to unrighteousness. If you come into Christ this morning, or you are, and you are in Christ this morning, there's no way you could live like the way you used to live before. Amen. Why you want to? It's like a story I heard recently. Amen. An example number one. You don't have to be a story. The 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 the, the, the prost lady was a prostitute and. Married one day to a king. And I just to paraphrase it. Amen. She was a prostitute. And the, the king came on one day and married her. She became what? Queen. A queen. <laughs> what sense does it make for she to go back and still prostitute herself when she's a queen? <laughs> People ask the question. That's the question. So you tell me that you can go back and do, yeah, you can. She could go back and do what you want, was doing, but does it make sense? No, it does not. Whosoever believes in the Son has eternal life, but whosoever rejects, big word this morning, whosoever, re, but whosoever rejects the Son will not see life, for God wrath, death remains on him. The only one that can give you this morning, if you never receive him, life is Jesus Christ. Those of us that came to him already have life. And that's why we are here conveying the truth to you so you can receive life. Not religion. No, man. It's life. Salvation is in his life. At the cross, he took away your sin at the cross. John 1 and 29 says, Behold the Lamb of God who taketh away the sin of the world. But you are not saved because your sins are forgiven. You are saved when you receive his life. John 10, I keep on preaching and teaching, saying that. John 10 says, I, Jesus was saying, I come that you may have life and have it abundantly. When you get Jesus, man, you got abundant life. You have to know that, though. As we said in the previous verses, these things have I written unto you that you that believe that you may know that you have eternal life. Amen. Whosoever believes in him, who is him? Jesus is not condemned. But who does not believe, does not believe stands condemned, dead already, because he has not believed. See the, the, you see the key verse there? Not believe in the name of God, one and only Son. The one and only. The one and only. <laughs> like most of them I call my wife, one and only. Yes, she's the one and only wife that I got. Yes. <laughs> she's the only one. <laughs> There's no other friend. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Years ago, I couldn't say that. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I was a bad boy. But then I understand God's grace. God came to Christ and filled me up with his love. God took a man with an empty heart and put his love in him, into me. He changed my life along. Amen. So he can do the same for you this morning. If God saved Joe Regis, friend, he can save any one of you that's listening to me this morning, today. 
<coughs> God have a provision under grace. Save by his life. Under the law, you had to do certain things for to, to get blessed. Under grace, you can just receive Christ. Saved by his life. Man is not merely saved by the death of Christ, but by his life. But by the life of Christ. When you receive him, you get life. John 10, John 1 and 12 says, As many as receive him, to them he gave the right to become a child. Uh, Romans 5 and 10. For if when we were God's enemies, Amen. That means we were lost. We were reconciled to him to the death of his son. That's when reconciled, that's when he did it at the cross. How much more, having been reconciled, having been reconciled, shall we be saved to his life? Colossians 2.13 says, When you were dead in your sins, yes, we were lost, and in the uncircumcision of your sinful nature, God made you alive with Christ. He forgave all, all, A-L-L, -L, all our sins. John 10.10 10 says, The thief come to steal and to kill and to destroy. I just mentioned it a while ago. But Jesus said, I have come that you may have life and have it to the full, our abundant life. Amen. Different translation. John 1 and 4 said, In him was life, and, was, and that life was the light of man. John 6, 48 says, I am the what? Bread of life. <laughs> come, come on with, come on, come on, go with me, brethren, this morning. <coughs> John, that, that's why, that's why, that's why we was having problem to get on. Amen, because that's, that's the message that will go forward this morning and men will receive life. Jesus said in John 5, 30, 39 and 40 said, I am the bread of life. <laughs> Hallelujah. John, um, you diligent, Jesus was speaking to the, to the scribes and the Pharisees. He said, and just he was talking to you this morning too, that, that read the scripture every day. Amen. <laughs> you diligently study the scripture because you think by them you possess eternal, possess eternal life. These are the scriptures that testify about me. Yet you refuse to come to me. When you read the scripture, what do you read it for? And to know him, the, the book, the whole Bible was written about one person. His name is Jesus Christ. God came in the flesh. Amen. <clears throat> John 14 and 6, Jesus answered, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father, but you me. Romans 6.23 for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. Not temporal, brethren. Eternal life. Amen. In Jesus Christ our Lord. Ephesians 2, 4 and 5 says, But because of his great love for us, God who is rich in mercy made us alive. <laughs> Glory in Christ. Even when we were dead in transgression, it is by his grace we are, hallelujah, saved. John 14, 19 says, Before long the world will not see me. Jesus was speaking, Any, see me anymore. But you will see me because I live, hallelujah, you will also live. Jesus went, yes. And that's why Jesus even said, the world's sin is unbelief in me. Amen. Amen. The Spirit of God is ministering to everyone, everyone that I lost this morning, telling you, come unto Jesus. He said, come unto me. I tell you the truth, and Jesus, um, 
and whosoever hears my word and believe in, in him who sent me has eternal life and will not be condemned. He has crossed over from death to life. Amen. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Salvation is restoring man to his true humanity. Amen. John 3, 3 and John 3, 3 and 6. In reply, Jesus declared, I tell you the truth. No one can see the kingdom of God unless he is born again. Born again word here this morning is not up for grab, friend. You must be born again. How can a man be born, Nicodemus said. Nicodemus, who was Nicodemus? Nicodemus was a ruler, just like the preachers today, not preaching the gospel. He was a ruler of the Jews. He was a ruler. He was a rabbi. But he did not know the ministry of, of, of grace. He did not know it. He did not know that you must be born again. <laughs> can I enter this and a second time? In his mother's womb? That's the question he asked. And, and Jesus answered, I tell you the truth, Nicodemus, that no one can enter the kingdom of God unless he is born of water. And this water there don't mean that baptism. No. Water, that means you were born in a sack of water. Amen. In your mother's womb. It's the first birth. And the spirit. And, and the, spirit. the spirit is when you accept Christ. And come to him, he gave, he come, he put his spirit, he hold it, you are born of the spirit of God. Flesh gives fl birth to flesh, but the spirit gives birth to spirit. Colossians 1 and 25 to 27. I have, I have became a servant of the co commission God gave me. That's Paul saying that. To present to you the word of God in its fullness. Amen. People call themselves apostles today and they, they, they don't even know that. Well, you know, Paul said, man, you got to present the word in fullness. God gave him that ministry. The ministry that has been, that been kept hidden at, for ages and generation it was not revealed to the Peter and them, it was revealed to Paul. What is now disclosed to the saints, to them God has chosen to make known among the Gentiles and everyone who listen. <laughs> the glorious riches of this mystery, amen, which is Christ in you, your hope of glory, amen. In him you have eternal life. God's testimony concerning eternal life. Hebrews chapter 13 and 5. I got to speed it up because I've been, we've been set, held back. God has said, never will I have forsaken you. Never will I forsake you. Amen. God said that, eh? But man say, no, he, you, he, he, you could walk away and he can walk away from you. John, 1 John 5 and 9, 13 said, We accept man's testimony, yeah, but God's testimony is greater because it is a testimony of God which he has given ab about his Son. Anyone who believes in his Son, of God, the Son of God, has this, this, tes this testimony in his heart right there. <laughs> it's right in you. <laughs> Anyone who does not believe God has made him a liar. Made him out to be a liar. Because he has not believed the testimony God has given about his son. And this is the testimony that God has given us. Yes, believers. God has given us eternal life. And this life is in his son. He who has the son has life. He who does not have the Son of God does not have life. I write these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God so that you may know, yes, hallelujah, that you have eternal life. Okay, I'm coming to a close. 
question to consider for this morning. What caused the Spirit of God to depart from Adam? <laughs> Hannah, you could answer. Yeah. Saying, what caused the Spirit of God to depart from Jesus? Sin. Amen. What, what is the, the only thing, who, matter of fact, I should ask, who sinned? Our sin. What is the only thing that could cause the Spirit of God to depart from you? Sin. What, where is your sin, brethren? Taken away. Amen. Where is your sin? Was your sin judged? Yes. Yes. What was the verdict? Guilty. What was the penalty? Death. Who took it? Jesus. Amen. How much more of it? All of it. Did you? Did he take all of it? Therefore, how much is left for you? No. None. Nothing. 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 <laughs> Why can the spirit of God depart from you Jesus. when you are when you sin? Because Jesus took it, friend. Conclusion. Period. Okay, I'm almost done. Colossians 3, um, Colossians 2, 9 and 19 says, For in Christ all the fullness, amen, of his deity lives bodily form in you and me. <laughs> in Christ. Amen. If you never receive him, you don't have him, friend. But you must, if you receive him, See, anyone come to me, I will no wise cast them out. Anyone, anyone, I don't care who you are. I don't care how bad you are, how vile you are. You just come to him, he's going to receive you, friend. He's calling you. Say, come, come, come. Come unto me. Come unto me, Jesus, he's calling. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Second Peter 1 and 3 say, His divine power has given to us Everything that we need for in for life and godliness to our knowledge of Him, yeah, you got to know Him, who called us by His own glory and goodness. Ephesians one and thirteen say, "Are and you also were included in Christ when you heard the word of truth." Key word, the word of truth. You hear a lot of preaching this morning. Them telling you all kind of stuff is not truth. Amen. <laughs> when you hear the word of truth, the spirit in you will resonate and say, this is truth. The gospel of your salvation. Having believed you were ma ma marked in him with a seal and the promise. Holy Spirit, when you came to him, friend, you are sealed. Sealed by the Holy Spirit. Spirit. The Christian lives by faith. Faith in what Jesus did. Ephesians 2, 9, 8, 8 and 9 says, For it is by grace you have been saved. Through faith. And this is not of yourself. It's the gift of God. Not of works so that no one can boast. Romans 14 and 23 says, Everyone, Everything that does not come by from faith. From Faith is in Colossians 2 and 6. So then just as you receive Christ Jesus as Lord, continue to live by faith in him. Amen. Hebrews 10 and 38. But be but my but my righteous one will live by faith. <laughs> Amen. That's that, that's who you are. Just live by faith. Not by your flesh. Flesh in what he did. And without faith, it is impossible to please God. Because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he is a rewarder of who earnestly seek him. Faith must have an object. <laughs> the object of the Christian faith is who? Come on, friend. Somebody answer for me. Jesus Christ and his finished work. I mean, Jesus, John 1 and 20, 25, 26. Jesus said unto her, the woman, I am the resurrection and the life. And he that believes in me, though he was dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever lives 
and lives in me shall never die. You will never experience a change of life until you experience the exchange life. <laughs> no time to go into all that, but for, for to me, to live in Christ. And Paul said that. Philippians 1 and 21. Galatians 2.20, Paul said, I have been crucified with Christ and no longer I live, but Christ lives in me. The life I, that, that I live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God who loves me and gave himself for me. Are you willing to accept Christ as your life? Question this morning. Are you willing to accept Christ Jesus as your life? Are you willing to, to, live, to live with the attitude of not my will, but his will? Yours will be done. <laughs> Are you willing to give up trying to control your circumstances? <laughs> Are you willing to give up trying to control everyone around you? Your kids, mate, parents, everyone, employees, etc. <laughs> that's that's one thing I had to come to grip with. You know, you have you just just preach. You can you can you can make people believe. You can make people come. Are you willing to surrender to one who, who to the one who gives his life for you, so he could give his life to you so he could live his life to you. That's what he wants to do. God bless you. Father, we thank you for your grace. We thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your word. We thank you for the one that accepted your word today and received you as Lord and Savior. And give. We know that you have given them eternal life, not temporal life. Thank you for joining this morning. Thank you for being with us. Even we had technical difficulty, but we thank you. We thank you that we just that you pursue with us, and we thank you for coming back tomorrow, tomorrow evening again, seven fifteen, Eastern Standard Time. God bless you, love you, and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye bye. Yeah. We stream and zoom and all of that. So.